I'm going in again. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait here. Hey, kid. Knock on the gate again. My. I'm popular today. Oh, you again. I'd like to ask you some questions. Look, I've had enough. I'm not going to stand here and indulge in idle chit-chat. Who are you? It's me, your husband. I've come back. John? John, is that really you? In the flesh. No, no, no. John Durkin is dead. John Durkin? Dead, dead, dead. You can't be him. You're not fooling me. You're one of them, aren't you? One of them? Who is them? I told you all before, I am not leaving. The only way you can drag me out of here is as a corpse. Goodbye. I'd like to see them try. Hey, kid. Knock on the gate again. My. I'm popular today. Oh, you again. I'd like to ask you some questions. Look, I've had enough. I'm not going to stand here and in- Who are you? It's me. Your son. Sam? Yep, that's me. Sam! It's been so long. Look at you. Yeah, look at me. Sorry, I was so rude. I almost didn't recognize you. Come on in, Sam. I'll make you dinner. Ah, uh, no, I, I can only stay for a minute. I have some questions I need to ask you. Of course, Sam. So, Mom, how's it going? Oh, you know me, Sam. It's tough living here on my own. But I get by. Yeah, I can see that. So, Mom, how are my brothers and or sisters? That's not funny, Sam. You know you're an only child. Right, just checking. <laughs> I was so unsure of this line. I thought it might have been too glib and too flip and too haha -ha funny, but Abe loved the line, Chen loved the line, all the beta testers liked the line, so I kept it in. I'm still not sure if it's appropriate, but everyone likes it, so I kept it in. How's Dad, Mom? Oh, Sam. You know that your father is dead. John Durkin died years ago. Ah, uh, right. Sorry. Listen, Mom. I need you to think very carefully. What's the last thing you remember? What do you mean? Answering the door and seeing you, of course. And before that? Nothing. You know nobody comes here. Except for the grocer, sometimes. And that... That who? Nobody. Mom, look around carefully. Are you sure that you're at home? You're so confusing, Sam. Look at the door. It says D, clear as day. So, tell me more about yourself, Mom. Sam, since when did you become so interested? Just trying to get to know you better. Well, isn't that sweet? But I honestly don't know what to tell you. Have you been talking to a reporter from the New Yorker? Yes, such a nice man. He came over and talked to me for a bit. I liked him. He listened to me. What did you talk about? Oh, this and that. Don't know why he was so interested. So, tell me more- Sam! Just trying to get- Well, is- but I- have you been- Yeah, he can- What did you talk- Oh, don't know what- So what can you tell me about... me? You're so confusing, Sam. Never mind. Do you know a guy named John Durkin? Is that a joke, Sam? You know he's been dead for ten years. Ah, uh, sorry. How can you forget? He was your father! Slip my mind. Slip your mind? Just, look, forget it. I'm going to go now, Mom. I'll come back to visit you soon. Sure, Sam. I'll be here. Trying to get rid of me, will they?
That broad really hacks me off. You should try flowers next time. Let's chat a second. Yeah, Joey? Actually, I don't have anything else to say. You? That's a first. All right, let's get on with it. Yeah. Joey, come here. Yeah, doll? All right, enough chit-chat. Let's finish this. Sounds good to me. That's it for now. Yeah, we'll talk more later. I don't think he'd want that. A thick... Joey, come here. I'm all ears, sweetheart. That's it for now. Yeah, we'll talk. Come on, let's go. Right behind. Yes? Twice in one evening? Come on in, sit down. Anything else you can tell me about Mavis? I'm afraid I've told you everything. Do you know anything about Sam, Mavis' son? I'm afraid not. Mavis discussed her son and seemed proud of him, but I don't think they see each other. I've never met the boy myself. Do you know anything about Sam, Mavis' son? I'm afraid not. Mavis discussed her son and seemed proud of him, but I don't think they see each other. I've never met the boy myself. Do you know anything about John Durkin, Mavis' ex-husband? Oh yeah, she did talk about him. Broke her heart, she said. I know they divorced very early in the marriage, and he died several years later. But I'm afraid I know nothing else. Do you know anything about John Durkin, Mavis's ex-husband? Oh yeah, she did talk about him. Broke her heart, she said. I know they divorced very early in the marriage, and he died several years later. But I'm afraid I know nothing else. I think that's all for now. Alright, you have a good night now. Let's talk, Joey. I'm all ears, sweetheart. I guess we better get out there and finish this thing. After you. That's it for now. Yeah, we'll talk more later. Mavis was married to John Durkin. Now John Durkin is dead. Why did Mavis change her last name? Maybe she was divorced. Mavis Wilcox is Sam's mother. Stands to reason his last name would be Wilcox, too. Maybe Sam didn't use his mother's name. He could have used his father's. I think I'll keep it as Sam Durkin for now. speaking. How may I direct your call? How about Sam Durkin? Is there a Sam Durkin listed? Sam Durkin, yes. Hold, please. It's about time. Originally, this role was given to Erin Robinson. She wanted to have a small cameo in the game, so I told her she could do the Columbia Operator. And unfortunately, the microphone she had had a lot of hiss and background noise, and we tried to use a background noise filter, but it got so heavily modulated, and it's such a minor thing, a little background noise wouldn't have mattered so much, but it was, the sheer quantity of it just made it impossible. So she graciously stepped aside and told me to recast the role. So I called up Julia Detar, a friend of mine who uh, works for, she does programming and art for Flash games. She came over and she just sat down and, and read the lines and she was actually pretty perfect because she sounds like a college kid. She could be just some college kid working the switchboard, you know, to, to earn some extra money. And uh, she sounds and looks and acts like a college kid, even though she's a bit older than that. So she was perfect. Darkin. Is this Sam? Yeah. Who's this? 
My name is Lauren Blackwell. I was hoping to ask you a few questions about your mother. Oh. Questions, huh? Yeah. All right, I'll bite. How do you know my mom? Originally, this character's name was Danny, but in writing the dialogue, I just knew <laughs> it had to be a younger version of Sam Durkin from the Shiva. It just was meant to be. So Francisco Gonzalez got to reprise his role as Sam Durkin, so he was happy to do that. I was her neighbor. You used to live in that dump? Yeah. And you knew Mavis? Very well. You actually talked to her? Yeah, all the time. Where, in the hallway? Why all the questions? Because I don't believe you. Whether you believe me or not, it can't hurt to talk to me. Maybe. Maybe not. But if you knew her, you'd know what apartment number she was in. I would? Sure you would. She never left the damn place. So what was it? Alright, so maybe you did know her. Thank you. So what do you want to know about her? What do you know about her death? It was suicide. She killed herself? Not literally, but it was like she chose to die. She had every opportunity to leave. They were going to pay her and find her a new place and everything. I tried to get her out, but that's my mom. She couldn't be dragged out of that dump by anybody or anything. Do you know who killed her? She was killed by some junkie, wasn't she? So they say. You think different? That's what I'm trying to find out. Well, good luck to you. How close were you with your mother? Close. Think of the farthest place you can and add another 10,000 miles. That's how close we were. Woman wasn't a mother, just crazy on wheels. Did Mavis ever leave her apartment? Never. Not once in the last 15 years. You don't seem upset by her death. Upset? Sure, she was my mom. But am I going to lose sleep? No. She drove my pop out of the house and into an early grave. I once thought I'd follow in his footsteps, but not anymore. The woman didn't go anywhere, never did anything. She was killing me just by existing. Now I feel like I can breathe again. That's the truth. What was it like living with her? You kidding? I lived with my pop. After three years of marriage, he had enough. Glad he had the sense to take me with him. And after your father died? I got by. You never visited your mother? Yeah, I visited her on Mother's Day, if that's what you want to know. You even got her a present once. Really? Yeah, for all the good it did. What did you give your mom for Mother's Day? I don't think that's any of your business, lady. It's been years. Just dust in the ground now. Bye, Sam. Thanks for your time. Yeah. see any connection. Sam got his mother a present for Mother's Day. Whatever it was, it probably got destroyed when the building was knocked down. No. No. I don't see how those two things are linked. There's no entry for that. Hmm, there's no listing. I thought for sure that would work. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. Mrs. Sherman? Hello again. You got more questions for me? Yes, I do. Well, hurry up and ask. I ain't getting any younger. Do you know a John Durkin? No, never heard of him. Do you know any college kids named Sam? No, never heard of him. Do you know any college kids named Sam? No, never heard of him. 
Do you know anything about this picture? I don't know the boy, but that was Mavis's living room. If Mavis had a son, I never saw him. Do you know any reporters from the New Yorker magazine? Reporters? No. Goodbye, Mrs. Sherman. Don't mention it. Yes? I'm becoming darn right popular. Come in, have a seat. Did Mavis ever mention a gift or present from her son? Now that you mention it, yes. She showed me a leather-bound edition of Alice in Wonderland and said it was from her son. Alice in Wonderland? Yes, by Lewis Carroll. Yeah, I've heard of it. What was that present Mavis got from her son? It was a leather-bound copy of Alice in Wonderland. I think that's all for now. All right. You have a good night now. Joey, come here. Yes? That's it for now. Yeah, we'll talk more later. I'm going in again. You know what to do. Yeah, yeah. I'll wait here. Hey, kid. Knock on the gate again. My. I'm popular today. Oh, hello, Sam. Hi, Mom. Hey, Mom. The good thing about knowing beforehand who's going to play a role is that you can totally envision how they're going to perform certain lines. And this whole mom thing is something, as I was writing it, I was cracking up because I could just imagine Abe's voice saying these lines and I would just laugh. And when Abe actually performed the lines, he didn't disappoint. Do you have that present I gave you? Which present was that? The book, Alice in Wonderland. Of course I still have it. It was the only Mother's Day gift you ever bought me, Sam. Can I see it? Whatever for. Come on, Ma. I just want to see it. Sure, Sam. It's right on the table. Great. Uh, why don't you bring it out here? You mean, pick it up? Yeah, pick it up and bring it over. Pick it up. Sure, I can pick it up. Oh! Oh, no! What? The book! It's gone! Gone, huh? Imagine that. Somebody stole it! Sam, I'm sorry. I'm so, so sorry. It's okay, Mom. Okay? Okay? I lost your gift! You need to find that book, Mom. I don't know if I can love a mother who loses my gifts. You don't mean that. I mean it, Mom. You need to tell me where the book is. But... I don't know where to look. Maybe it's out here, Mom. In the hallway? Sure, in the hallway. Yeah, I'm sure it's out here. Come on out and help me look. Oh, okay, Sam. But only for you. I... I still don't see it anywhere. Let's try further down, Mom. I'm... I'm outside. Yeah, I knew you could do it, Mom. Mom? Sam? Sam, where are we? I'm scared. I'm right here. Mom, I need you to do something. What? Turn around. I can't. Sure you can. Just turn around and look behind you. Oh. Where's the building? Where's my apartment? Where's my home? It's gone! Those bastards, they tore it down! You. You made me leave, and they tore it down! Hey, calm down. I've got nothing now. Mom. I am not your mother. 
You are not my son. My son hates me. All I had left was my home, and then... Then I... Oh, God! Are you happy now? You couldn't just leave me there. You had to bring me out. You had to make me remember. I'm sorry. It's horrible. Being dead, it's horrible. You get used to it. I... I don't want to feel like this anymore. Everything is so dark and cold. Can I go home now? Sure. Sure, I can take you home. Just hold on to this. Over to you, kid. Right. So, let's talk about Node Space. This was Ooh. really cool. Thank you. <laughs> it was one of the more fun ones to design. Yeah, I'm not sure if I'm allowed to say this, but I thought the, uh, the Node Space in the other game was good, but kind of boring for what it should have been. I wanted Lauren's walkway to be a bit more wacky and weird, and because um, Rosa, I think, is a very straight-laced character, so it makes sense that her pathway is very, like, neat cobblestones, but... I don't know, Lawrence ended up looking a bit more like marshmallow bits, which wasn't quite my intention, but <laughs> it's kind of spirals off into infinity and, you know, kind of raises some questions. The path is also supposed to look like it breaks up more as you get away from the door, so. Yeah, yeah, I, li I like that. It reminded me of that, um, you said marshmallow bits, so it's some kind of like chalky, multicolored candy. They're called rockets. Yes, yes. I think you guys call them smarties. Oh, my... God. Mavis? It's so bright and big. It just goes on forever. I just want to go home. Please, can I go home? I think that's the only home you've got now. I'm sorry. What a legacy. Husband gone and dead. My son hates my guts. My home is gone. My life, over. I remember that too. Dying, I mean. That old woman choking me. Old woman? She just came in and killed me. She said she was going to help me. Uh, well, what now? The light, Mavis. Just head towards it. And then? I don't know. I'm scared, but it feels right somehow. Oh, John. Sam. I'm so sorry. For everything. This is probably the saddest character I've ever created. <laughs> Mavis is, um... God, she's depressing. Uh, and I was trying to think of ways maybe to make it a little happier for her, maybe even an alternate way of playing through this section, bringing the sun in maybe or, or something. I don't know. Or maybe if Joey could continue to pretend to be her son. I don't know. But you know what? I, I didn't, it wasn't appropriate. It just really, you know, she's has a lot of regret. She's lived her life this way, and, and there are consequences to that that she has to accept. And she's accepted them. She regrets them. She's accepted them. You know, she's lived a life, she's made her choices, and, you know, she has to live with them. Or in her case, she has to die with them. And you know, she still has to move on. It's too late now. And to, to magically make it better just felt like it was cheating the character and cheating the situation and cheating the lesson, I guess, behind it, um, that there are consequences to this. I know that uh, there are many times that I don't want to be social. I don't want to go out and I, I stay home for long periods of time and I uh, become very lonely. That's a consequence of, of shutting yourself away from people. Uh, so I make an effort to be social when, when I can. And that's, you know, that's a lesson to, to be learned from this, if anything. And uh, to make it happier, to make it, it magically go away would have been cheating, would have been unfair. So I kept it sad, and I kept it regretful, and I hope I didn't depress you guys, but um, this is the way it had to be, I think. I wish I could feel sorry for you, but I don't feel much of anything anymore. Best of luck, wherever you are. Uh... Joey? Yeah, hi. Glad you're up. You! Did you? Did you save her? Yeah, yeah, sure. We saved her. Joey, is she talking to you? Yeah, go figure. Thank you, both of you. I only wanted to save them. Mavis told me she was killed by an old woman. Was that you? I save, just like you. Who are you? I am the Countess. 
Countess? Countess of what? It's the only name I know. I saved them! I helped them! I... I'm sorry! Hey, get back here! Don't just stand there, let's get after her! She's pretty spry for an old lady. Spry my foot? You couldn't outrun a one-legged turtle with those lungs. Yes, I admit, this is very obviously a cop-out. If, uh, I had the liberty of a budget and, uh, a full-time professional art team, I would have loved to include some kind of chase sequence where you chase the Countess and blah blah blah. But, you know, <laughs> I'm on a budget here. This is how it had to be. Don't start with me, okay? She's in one of her sulky moods. Hey there. Nobody that old should move that fast. Just keep telling yourself that. Hmm. Joey, she could see you. How could she do that? I don't know. But I think this case just got a hell of a lot more complicated. Fantastic. Let's chat a second. Yes? So are we gonna futz around here all night? We got stuff to do. Yeah. So are we gonna futz around here all night? We got stuff to do. Yeah. Alright, let's get on with it. Yeah. Hey, Joey. I'm all ears, sweetheart. I guess we better get out there and finish this thing. After you. I guess we better- After you. That's it for now. Yeah, we'll talk more later. smoking room. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. So, like, what were your thoughts going into it? You saw the picture, right? <laughs> Uh, yeah, yeah, he sent me some photos and I kind of amalgamated the cool bits into one background and you can see in the background there's the Twin Towers there because this game is set in the 70s and they would have still been there, which I thought was an interesting touch. I'm not sure if many people will notice that, but that's in there. Well, once I get to the map screen, I'm sure they will. <laughs> yeah, well, it's pretty obvious there. Yeah. But uh, you mentioned that if you were in this place in real life and looking that direction, they would actually be in the complete opposite direction, but artistic license. <laughs> exactly, yes. Because <laughs> originally it was supposed to be in Battery Park, and you could actually see the towers from Battery Park. From Roosevelt Island, you really can't, but like you said, artistic license, whatever. Um, absolutely. Cool. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Hmm. Looks like another bus, Joey. Yeah, maybe. Or maybe not. This is a real location. You could actually go to New York City, go to Roosevelt Island, and find this exact spot. Originally, this scene was supposed to take place down in Battery Park City, in the park by the water, because I actually saw a homeless jazz man playing there once, and that always stuck with me, that image of this lonely jazz guy by the water in Battery Park playing the saxophone. But then one day, I was over at Roosevelt Island. I happened to have my camera with me, and I saw this view. And something about the composition of it just looked really nice, and I thought it would be perfect for an adventure game background. So I took a picture, and I decided to change the location. So it's now Roosevelt Island instead of Battery Park. Wait, you hear that? I think so. Let's get closer. Hey, look. Looks like our evening might not be a total wash after all.
Say cheese. He's playing a saxophone, totally enraptured. I don't even think he knows we're here. Nice tune. You write it yourself? Hey, mister. I'm Lauren Blackwell. What's your name? Hey, mister. You who? I'm talking to you. Hello? He's not hearing you, kid. What are you doing here? Kind of late to be out, don't you think? The dead don't keep normal hours, dear. I think I've forgotten what normal hours are. Ugh, forget it. Joey. Yeah, doll? Joseph Mitchell certainly is interesting. Yeah, interesting. Did you notice his typewriter? No, what about it? There was dust on it, and the paper was blank. That thing hasn't seen much use in a long time. Maybe he uses a pen and paper. Hmm, maybe. That old woman, how could she see you? I don't know. Only folks that can see me are animals and other ghosts. And I don't think she's either. I don't know, Joey. She reminds me of something. Pardon? I can't explain it. Well, if you see her again, you can ask her. Any thoughts on our sax-playing ghost? No more than you, darling. He likes his music, that's for sure. I doubt we'll get anything useful from him. That's it for now. Yeah, we'll talk more later. The name's Joey. Ah, the talkative sort, are we? Well, we'll soon sort that out. So... Nice night, huh? That's a pretty nice instrument you got there. Mind if I have a look? Hey, do you feel... restless? Like you've got somewhere to go but don't know where? It means you're dead, Mac. Can you even hear me? Hey, you got a cigarette? I could sure use one. Hey, do you know where the Guggenheim Museum is? The wife and I have been trying to find it all day. The wife? Shh! After recording this dialogue, I had this sudden fear that the Guggenheim didn't exist <laughs> during this time period. So, I quickly looked it up, and fortunately the Guggenheim had been around since the 1930s. So, that was a close call, ladies and gentlemen. Pay attention, you fat chump. I'm talking. That's your idea of intimidating? Quiet, will ya? I'll be back, pal. Don't you worry. Hey, I'm talking, Buster. Hey! hey, hey. You let, let go. go! One of the advantages to being good friends with actors is that they tend to know plenty of other actors. So when I am in need of actors, I can usually mine that networking vein. And the guy who originally was supposed to play... Isaac Brown couldn't do it. I met Daryl when I was hanging out with Abe once at this bar, and he had a couple of his actor friends there, and we were all talking, and I, the subject of what I did for a living came up, and Daryl was like, oh, if you ever need voice actors, I can do voice acting, and Abe piped up, he's like, yeah, Daryl's awesome, and I kind of looked at him and said, well, can you do an old jazz man type voice, and he just launched into this whole big impromptu thing and I said, dude, that's awesome. I could definitely use you. And so he came, he did the lines and he just nailed it. He was so perfect. So I'm definitely going to be using this guy again. Just what are you doing here? What am I doing? What do you, what do you think, think I'm doing? doing? Get away, Get away from, from me, man. man. I'm Joey. Pleasure to meet you. I don't, I don't care, care who you are. Nobody, Nobody interrupts, interrupts my set. 
I'm going to talk to you and you're going to listen. Or so help me, I'll take this sex and shove it right up your... Give me that! I need to ask you a few questions first. Not now, man. Can't you see I'm in the middle of something? Get off the stage! Stage? Some of the early criticism of this game, before it even came out, was that it didn't have character portraits, the dialogue portraits, the close-ups that you got in uh, Shiva and Blackwell Legacy. There was mostly a financial decision. I, I just wanted to keep this as simple as possible. And uh, it was... It turned out to be um, much more work in the long run. It wasn't out of laziness that I didn't have dialogue portraits. It actually caused a lot more work for me. Because, like right here, there's this animation of them struggling over the saxophone. But they don't only struggle over the saxophone, they also talk. So I had to include talking animations for both of them. And I had to animate them separately so they could talk separately. And it was difficult to get that to sync up properly. Because yeah, they would grab the saxophone, but then I would have to separate them so they could each talk uh, individually, and they had to still float, bob up and down individually. It would have been so much easier just to have one animation of them bobbing up and down, holding the saxophone, and just keep using the talking portraits, the close-up portraits. That would have made it a lot easier to code. So uh, it wasn't entirely out of laziness, because it was a lot more work to do it this way. Ow! Now this one took you a while, was the Joey and Isaac fighting and getting hit thing. Yeah, that was fun to do. I was I was at home at the time. That was the week before Mittens when I had just gotten back from Europe and I was spending some time with the family. And, uh, you know, we were working in the basement on this, like, have this elaborate thing open and paint. And my brother, who's like 19, had a bunch of his friends over who were like, what the hell are you doing? I'm like, it animates, look! <laughs> he hits him with a saxophone. It's a ghost and another ghost. It makes sense. <laughs> it totally makes sense. I mean, they couldn't get it. You know, they're just not cool enough. Yeah, just, uh, clearly, they're the ones who aren't cool. <laughs> exactly. Well, hmm. they're, we're cool in a different way. We reach, we're a whole different level of coolness. Yeah. I'm making no sense. <laughs> That's, That's how we how treat we your kind, kind at Johnny Ivory's. Johnny Ivory's? What are you talking about? Hello? Oh, we're dealing with a real sharp tack here. That ghost mentioned Johnny Ivory's Little Blade Connection. Johnny Ivory's Jazz and Cabaret. It's on Bleecker and 7th Avenue. You up for some jazz, Joey? You mean we finally get to listen to some real music? Call it my special treat. Lauren has to look up people the old-fashioned way. In Shiva and Legacy, they got to use a computer. Lauren has to use the phone book. In Legacy, when you use the computer to look up people, you instantly went right to the notebook. So it was kind of easy. And many people missed the old Shiva interface where you could type in search queries. So I brought that back, and what was cool is that I got to add little extra Easter eggs. If you look up me, you can look up Aaron Robinson, the artist. You can look up uh, Chris Jones, the creator of the engine, and some others. You could look up Rabbi Stone. Try looking up Rabbi Stone from the Shiva. Uh, Abe got a kick out of doing that. Uh, so yeah, I've, I, li I like this interface. I'll probably keep it. Using the notebook was too easy. Busy. I better go over there in person. Come on, let's get out of here. Right behind you. I love this song. I, I, this is one of my favorites in the game. The guy who did the music for the game, his name is Thomas Reagan. He's from Denmark. And he was so enthusiastic. I was really kind of blown away at how enthusiastic and how into the project he was. 
he just kept sending me track after track after track, and they're all brilliant. And he tried to keep them within period. He tried to keep them 70s-ish um, for the most part. I wasn't so concerned with keeping the era so so vibrantly alive, uh, but he did. He really wanted to keep it accurate. He wrote this theme music, which I loved. I thought it was absolutely brilliant. And then he realized that he used a certain kind of drum sound, which wasn't uh, available, which wasn't in use in the 70s. So he changed it, which just shows his amazing attention to detail and how professional he really is. He not only does all this composing work in his spare time, but he also has a day job. He also has a wife and he also has a kid. I don't know how he does it all, but I'm glad he does it because uh, his work is amazing. I don't know much about pianos, but it seems nice enough. This place is empty. Good. The less people, the better. It's his sheet music. He's barely looking at it. He must know the song by heart. I can't just take the sheet music. That would be rude. He seems to be enjoying himself, even though there's nobody here to listen to him. Just some sheet music. Nothing special. What do we have here? He's written something at the top of the sheet. Property of Cecil Sharp. Aw, how sweet. Maybe his mommy signed it for him. He's a swinger past his prime. Not bad on the piano, though. I just wish he'd keep his eyes on the keys. This joint doesn't draw much of a weekday crowd. I don't need to sit. Hmm, this one looks interesting. Jambalaya Records, huh? It's as good a lead as any. Jambalaya Records, huh? It's as good a lead as any. Well, will you look at that? Our sax playing spirit in the flesh. It's our sax playing spirit in the flesh. Take a closer look. Don't mind if I do. Take a cl Whoever that is, I can't see him. Especially with such a pleasant distraction getting in the way. Hmm, this one looks interesting. The only thing holding up that dress is fate. Pretty girl, though. I wonder who she is. The woman is blocking the piano player. I can't see his face. It's the Jasmine Ghost from the Promenade. Courtesy of Jambalaya Records. Hmm, might be worth checking out. Hey, mister. Yes? Got a minute? For a pretty thing like you, I got several. Huh. So what brings you here on such a sad night? I just love music. Well, how about that? I just happen to make music. It's a match made in heaven. <laughs> uh, watch out, ladies. Uh, Daryl is really like this in real life, and he is single. <laughs> you know, I just love this so much. That's really all I have to say. I'm Lauren. What's your name? Pleasure is all mine, Lauren. You can call me C. C. You got it, sister. Is that C like the water? That's C like the chord. It's the first chord I played, and you never forget your first. Ain't that the truth? You know any other musicians? I do run in those circles, yeah. Any of them play here? Sometimes we get major gigs here, but me? I'm what you call the dependable type. These fingers can go all night long. Can they now? Oh jeez, make him stop. One thing that I tried to keep very subtle, and I don't know if you guys picked up on it, but uh, that's what this commentary is for, is that Joey is very much in love with Lauren. And that's something he won't admit to himself, let alone to her. It's a feeling he can't act on, and it's very frustrating, especially in these little interchanges with Cecil Sharp here where Lauren is very obviously attracted to Cecil, and Joey is aware of this, and he is obviously a little jealous. And it's an aspect of Joey's character that I really like and I find very tragic and, and so on. It's something that I planned from the beginning in Legacy whenever there was a line where Joey was discussing Lauren. I told Abe uh, when doing the voice that uh, he should 
try to put a little bit of heartbreak, a little bit of loss into the lines, and that does come across very subtly. And if you picked up on it, congratulations, and if not, well, now you know. It's okay for me to talk to you like this. I don't hear anybody else complaining. Dull night, huh? You could say that. But I think it just got a bit more interesting. Is that right? Well, these lips don't lie. What's the band in that photograph behind you? That picture is old, sister. It's not that old. Old enough. Before my time is old. Here is a mistake I made. I know this bit of dialogue sounds a little weird. It's very obviously recycled from some other bits of dialogue that Cecil says. And it's kind of blatant, and it kind of is ugly, but it had to be done. When I beta tested the game, the testers noted that you couldn't ask Cecil about the photograph. It was a natural thing to ask him. I said, yeah, that's a good idea. So I added some dialogue where you could ask Cecil about the photograph and you can ask him for the photograph. And he actually gives you a much better explanation than he gives you in the actual game. Unfortunately, what I didn't do was take those lines, because this was towards the end of the whole programming process. I did not take those lines and copy them onto the voice acting script. So when Daryl sat down to read the lines, he didn't read those lines. He didn't record those lines. So when I started to import them, I realized, oh crap, I'm going to have to do some futzing, creative futzing, in order to get it to work. So that's what I did. So that is my mistake. It's one of the drawbacks in dealing with voice acting in games. Uh, it limits your flexibility in, in many respects. I made this mistake many times working on Blackwell Legacy, and I only made this mistake once working on Blackwell Unbound. Hopefully, the next time around, I'll have refined the process, and I I won't have to worry about it at all. Do you have a copy of that photograph anywhere? Nope. Sorry. Here is a mistake I made. I know that... Do you read The New Yorker? Nope. Sorry. I don't suppose you've seen a strange old woman around, have you? This is the village, sister. You see all sorts out here. She calls herself the Countess. Sorry. Is your name Cecil Sharp? Now who went and told you that? Oh, you could say a little bird told me. Tweet, tweet. Well, you won't go tell nobody, will you? Lips are sealed. So, Cecil. Oh man. That hurts, sister. That really does. <laughs> Sorry. So, Cecil. Oh man. That hurts, sister. That really does. <laughs> Sorry. I'm looking for info about a musician. Well, I'll try to help you out. Who is he? I don't know his name. I think he's a sax player. I know lots of sax players, sister. Big guy, kind of chubby, has a beard. Nope. Doesn't ring a bell. About that sax player. Yeah? He's in that photo behind you. Is he now? Yeah. Do you know him? That picture is old, sister. It's not that old. Old enough. Before my time is all. Don't know who that is. Sorry. See you around. Anytime, sister. Say cheese. It's the photo from Johnny Ivory's. He already knows about this photograph. It's right behind him. I don't know much about... 